Sunday at 1.30, it's a good old-fashioned Texas showdown when the New York Mets challenge the Houston Astros live from Shea Stadium. Then at 7, it's a comedy showdown south of the border. Martin Short, Chevy Chase, and Steve Martin knock them dead with laughter in The Three Amigos. It all happens Sunday on Channel 9. Jersey, we throw money away on car insurance. Only 38 cents of every dollar gets to accident victims. The rest, legal costs and administrative waste. I'm Jerry Cardinale running for governor. My program, cut premiums in half, pay the injured according to a fixed schedule, get lawyers out of it. Insurance that protects our bodies shouldn't cost us an arm and a leg. Jerry Cardinale for governor. In 18th century America, life was different. It still is. Come back in time to Colonial Williamsburg. Come taste the different foods. Hear the different sounds. Smell the different smells. Meet the different people. For a vacation that's totally different, come to Colonial Williamsburg. Where 18th century America lives. Mitsubishi Galant. Mitsubishi Mirage. Mitsubishi got the awards. You get the rewards. You could save up to $1,000 in factory-to-dealer incentives on Galant, Mirage, and other models. Claim your reward today. Only at your tri-state Mitsubishi Motors dealer. Channel 9 is dedicated to improving our children's education and recognizing teacher excellence. We call this project A-plus for kids. Watch for A-plus programs and special reports. Police have announced that they're still searching for a third suspect in this case with the cop shooting. They've already arrested two people and have charged them with attempted murder. The courage of uh, the undercovers in particular is superhuman. Donald Trump is picking up the medical expenses of the Brooklyn woman who was raped and thrown from a building. We were at the trial of the uh, Bronx principal. A juror claimed she got sick. She was taken to a hospital for examination. The other jurors could do nothing. The running of the uh, Kentucky Derby, the 115th Kentucky Derby, is the big story in sports today. Three, two, one. Well, a track, over two. From the newsroom, this is Channel 9 News. Good evening, everyone. A tragic discovery tonight in Brooklyn. It happened at 6.30 in Sheepshead Bay. A passerby noticed the bodies of two boys floating in the bay. Police believe the boys are seven-year-old Louis Miranda and eight-year-old Juan Laporte. They were reported missing yesterday after playing outside their nearby apartment building. But one of their neighbors claims he saw them at the dock sometime yesterday. They were running underneath the docks. The mates and the captains were chasing them. They came back. They must have slept on one of the boats last night because, because of the storm. They were seen here yesterday afternoon, last night, and all day today up to 3.30. We were called to the scene at, uh, where the youths were missing. And uh, one was found afloat, and uh, we used that information to look for the other one that was, uh, you know, submerged. Given that, we searched the area and uh, found the, uh, the uh, small kid on the bottom. No further comment from police yet on what might have happened to the children. Eight-year-old Juan Laporte is the son of former boxing champ Juan Laporte. A New York City police officer remains in critical but stable condition tonight. Two teenagers have been arrested, charged with shooting that officer. Kelly Wright has the latest. 16-year-old Taquan Parker of Harlem and 19-year-old Kevin Rivers of the Bronx were arrested in the shooting of an unidentified undercover cop. The shooting took place in this building while the officer was negotiating a drug sale from a major crack ring operating in Harlem and downtown Manhattan. Police say the cop's cover was blown and the suspects had planned to assassinate him. They might have remembered him or someone might have seen him 
uh, that knew that he was a police officer and, and tipped off the people that were involved in this transaction uh, that he was, in fact, the uh, police officer. Police say the undercover cop was shot in the back here on the fourth floor. He managed to struggle down these steps, getting to the outside, whereupon someone called 911 for help. Some residents say the building is occupied with drug dealers. I know there's crack dealers in this building because in the beginning when I first moved here, I saw them a lot. You know, I saw a lot of crack dealers and I just avoid them. The wounded officer is recovering from the gunshot, which fortunately missed his vital organs. He is expected to survive. Because he was working undercover, he was not wearing a bulletproof vest, nor was he armed. Mayor Koch commended the officer. The courage of these cops and the courage of uh, the undercovers in particular is superhuman. The two teenagers are charged with attempted murder, criminal possession of a weapon, and felony sale of a controlled substance. If proven guilty, they face 15 years to life. Joseph Parker is the older brother of Taekwon. The news of his brother's arrest is disturbing. I never thought anything like this would happen to my family. Police are looking for yet a third suspect in this case. He is believed to be a 25-year-old, dark-complected black male, 5'6 to 5'7 inches tall. And he was last seen wearing a light gray or light blue bomber's jacket with a fur collar. At the 28th Precinct in Harlem, I'm Kelly Wright, Channel 9 News. In other news tonight, the rape of a jogger in Central Park has outraged many people, but a group in Harlem says the reaction is now getting out of hand. Neighbors and friends of accused teenagers gathered to protest what they say is racial hatred being encouraged by certain groups. I resent the intrusion of the, of the police and the media in trying to characterize all of the youth in this particular development as animals, as savages, as a wild a wolf pack, and everything else. Everything else, including this ad placed by Donald Trump in city papers. The leaders say residents of Schomburg Plaza have received death threats attached to copies of the ad. Instead of using a criminal justice system that presumes innocence, he is calling for a lynch mob. A lynch mob, hysterical type situation that will only exasperate the racial polarization and the racial violence that has been taking place. And the leaders say the Trump ad shows a disregard for the legal system. Van? Right, Donald Trump had his answer to those charges as he got involved in another brutal rape case. I don't know what crime and fighting crime has to do with racism. I'm very much in favor of the death penalty. Many people are in favor of the death penalty. White, black, Asian, it makes no difference. Trump had just visited a Brooklyn woman recovering from a horrible attack. She was raped by three men and then thrown into this four-story shaft. Miraculously, she survived. Two suspects are in custody. A third is being sought. Trump has offered to pay the victim's medical bills, and he feels strongly about her attackers. I do want to hate her assailants. They uh, mugged, raped, and threw a woman off a roof. I want to hate her assailants. Yes, I do, if that's okay. I mean, perhaps you don't want to hate them. Perhaps you want to love her assailants. I want to hate her assailants, and I guess that's my privilege. Tonight, the rape victim is in critical condition, but she is able to respond to questions. No verdict in the trial of a Bronx principal, and today it was very close to a mistrial. A hitch came late this afternoon. One of the six jurors claimed to be ill. Proceedings came to a halt. Because the case against 55-year-old Matthew Barnwell is a misdemeanor, there are six jurors instead of the usual 12. But Lourdes Bourbon, the jury foreman, sent a note to the judge saying the deliberations had made her sick. This created a dilemma because the alternate jurors had been excused. Meanwhile, the juror was taken to the hospital for examination. While the one juror was at the hospital waiting to be examined, the other jurors sat around, basically doing nothing, and the defendant paced in the hallway. Matthew Barnwell walked the halls during the impasse, and the juror waited two hours at Beekman Downtown Hospital to be examined. The jury had been deliberating since yesterday, and at times could be heard yelling at one another. At 10 o'clock last night, they told the judge that they had reached an impasse. Barnwell had been arrested last November for buying crack from a pusher at 148th Street and Amsterdam Avenue. If found guilty, he could spend a year in jail. This afternoon, when the forewoman asked to be excused, prosecutors said they were prepared to ask for a mistrial. But that didn't happen. The juror was eventually found by doctors to be healthy enough to continue. The complete six-member jury will now be back tomorrow morning. Mr. Cooley and Mr. Barnwell and I want to go ahead. We pick the jury very carefully. Uh, we think and hope that he will be acquitted. Waited for vindication since November of last year. He's perfectly willing to wait another day. You have a deliberation now that is twice as long as the trial itself. The 
$60,000 a year principal is suspended from his job pending the outcome of the trial, but he is still drawing his pay. Coming up next, Twister's cut a path of death and destruction. 21, 21 have been killed. We'll also have the latest from outer space on day three of the shuttle mission. And here's an idea for a hearty meal that's good for your heart as well. Low cholesterol beef. That story next. Wall Street's best-known journal says Lincoln cars have slipped in quality, while Cadillacs simply got better. Cadillac, Fleetwood, and DeVille outscored Lincolns in two major quality surveys. Maybe that's why they outsell the Lincoln Town Car and Continental combined. See the new Cadillacs. It's your Cadillac Tri-Statesman, especially if you're rattling around in a Lincoln. I'll never give up my Cadillac. What do power lunchers at the Four Seasons find in USA Today? The power of the USA. USA Today, every day. Are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime? National Geographic and Channel 9 want to take you on an unforgettable journey. Every Monday night at 8, beginning Monday, trek with us across five continents. From the frozen north to the tropical south. From the arid deserts to the vast and restless oceans, you'll experience the sights and sounds that have captured our imaginations and left lasting impressions. Uncover the wonders of the world with two back-to-back -back episodes of the best of the National Geographic specials. Beginning Monday night at 8, here on Channel 9. A sightseeing plane carrying American tourists crashed in a remote jungle of Mexico today. Six people reportedly were killed, all of them American. No identities have been released. In Panama tonight, stores are being boarded up and security tightened on the eve of presidential elections. The voting tomorrow is a showdown between military strongman General Noriega and his opposition, which is backed by the United States. Amid charges, the election might be rigged. Several observer teams from the U.S. are on hand, but they are in the canal zone only, not Panama itself. Former Presidents Gerald Ford and Jimmy Carter are among the delegates. In the West Bank, one of the heaviest days of violence in the 17-month-old conflict, two Palestinians were shot and killed by Israeli troops, and at least 125 people were reported wounded. The rioting broke out as Muslims celebrated the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Space Shuttle Atlantis more than halfway through its journey through space. As has become customary, the day started with music. Once the music was over, a day of picture-taking started. Awkward First shots of themselves, their families, and various parts of the cabin. Then the Atlantis astronauts set their focus on some beautiful shots of the Florida coastline. The shuttle is scheduled to return Monday afternoon. For more than a week, Channel 9 has been telling you how important it is to watch your cholesterol levels and have them tested. And tonight, we have a follow-up story on one project to produce healthier food. Rob Bell has that story. Their names are Adam and Eve. When Channel 9 first introduced them to you last summer, they were the first breeding pair of Belgian blue cattle on the East Coast. Imported from Canada, they now live in New Jersey at Skillman Dairy Farms, which provides beef for 32 institutions across the state. The cattle aren't really blue, and neither is supervisor Ed Crody. The meat has less fat, less calories, and less cholesterol than our standard beef, and indeed less than poultry. Now Crody is crossbreeding the blues with the common Holstein. And the meat characteristics will be the same as the full blood, therefore less fat, less calories, less cholesterol. This American Belgian blue Holstein calf was born in early March. The state isn't exactly singing the blues on this $16,000 investment. Crody estimates that within five years, sales of Belgian blue Holstein beef and related products could easily gross a million dollars a year. In the first intensive study of its kind, Rutgers professor Dr. Glenn Horton is now comparing Belgian blue Holstein beef with more traditional stock. There's been very little uh, scientific evaluation of, of the different breeds, and certainly not under American conditions. Uh, so the, the, certainly the preliminary data is most encouraging. In the United States, beef consumption has dropped steadily for the last 20 years, largely due to health concerns. That makes leaner Belgian blues, which also yield more meat per pound and go to market sooner than traditional beef stock, look green, like the color of money. I would buy and I think it would be healthier. I would rather feel better as much as I like meat. It's one of my favorites, better than fish and turkey. I feel very comfortable that uh, uh, we're ahead of our time in this, in this venture. Institutions across the state will be serving Belgian Blue Holstein beef within the next two years. It should be available at your local supermarket sometime in 1992. 
at Skillman Farms in Somerset County, Rob Bell, Channel 9 News. I guess that goes with Belgian waffles. The <laughs> man that's going to come up next to tell you where is the beef. Carl Churkin and a man oh, yes. uh, with all of the action as well. Huh. Certainly the man who knows what's on the menu, right? Thrills, chills, and then a surprise in the Kentucky Derby today, and the Mets maintaining their lead in the NL East. Hojo's got his mojo working at Shea. Highlights coming your way next in sports. <laughs> Presenting the Reverse Double Ankle Cross, one exercise that'll shape you up for the exciting Freeport Nights. Fly Bahamas Air from Newark to the Bahamas. Call your travel agent or Bahamas Express. Presenting the Designer Smile, created by EpiSmile. Alluring, dazzling, so very brilliant. EpiSmile, the everyday cosmetic whitener for your teeth. This is a first. Happy smile. Now when you smile, you can measure the whiteness. This year, it's the designer's smile. Epi Smile. Whiteness you can measure at Bloomingdale's. Another beauty breakthrough from Epi Products. You got brain, wit, bumps and humps, coos, mud, holes and lumps, all the roots and rocks that you're up against. You need rich stone, rich stone, count the just a finger's width of tire between you and the road, you need world-class technology, quality engineered to give you Bridgestone confidence. No matter what, it just makes sense. You can't drive today without confidence. Bridgestone confidence. Alpha shakes with just 70 calories. When you're tempted to be bad, nothing's as good. Tough going today for Easy Goer. He was the favorite. The favorite hasn't won the Derby in, what, 10 years? About 11. 11? 1979. Hard to believe that's when Spectacular Bid won the Kentucky Derby. Cold and rainy in Kentucky today. Derby goers passing up on those mint juleps in favor of pots of hot coffee. The hot betting action on the field of 15 horses extended about 10 minutes while they waited for Triple Buck to get himself a new shoe. That's a new one on us. At the start, they were stepping on each other's shoes in the 115th running of the Kentucky Derby. Despite the bad weather, the track in pretty good shape, but the going not to the liking of heavily favored Easy Goer. Now, let's get the stretch call from Dave Johnson. Is still tough on the inside. Then comes Easy Goer and awe inspiring, but with a 16th of a mile to go. And here comes Sunday Silence through this stretch, coming to the finish of the Derby. Sunday Silence wins this Derby by two lengths. A... The Colt, who almost died twice in his younger years, wins the Derby in two minutes, five seconds flat, going off at three to one odds, paying 8.20 to win. Sunday Silence with Pat Valenzuela up comes in two and a half lengths ahead of Easy Goer. And his stablemate, awe-inspiring, was third. Trainer Charlie Whittingham says racing fans, please don't despair. There will be a triple crown winner this year, only it'll be his horse. Sunday Silence, not Easy Goer. Now to Comiskey Park on the south side of Chicago. Big bad Leroy Brown didn't show up. Too cold for him. Yankees dugout coach Charlie Fox sporting the Antarctica look. Windchill factory below freezing in Chicago. Top of the fourth, Jerry Royce dealing to Tommy Brookins. It's gone. A solo homer ties the score at one apiece. Top of the fifth now. Yanks go up two to one with the snow coming down. Jesse Barfield sacrifice fly on a line to left, allowing Steve Sachs to tag and score. But the score now in the eighth, two to two. Right-hander Rich Dodson making his first start for the Yanks. Nice job through the first six. On the American League scoreboard at Toronto, Al Leiter goes six plus in his first start with the Blue Jays. Doesn't figure in the decision, though, a 5-4 win for the Angels. The Twins and Indians rained out. Oakland falls to Detroit 6-3. Jack Morris finally gets a win. Kansas City loses at Milwaukee. The Brewers score the game's one and only run in the 10th. Texas blanked by Boston 7-zip. And in the first of two, Seattle 2-1 over Baltimore. The nightcap just underway. The Mets are back atop the NL East, all by their lonesome. But it's still a good place to be as David Cohn goes the distance to beat the Astros today at Shea. A day of celebration cone for Coneheads, oh. of jubilation in the Cone Corner. Bottom of the first, take a look at this. It goes down as a 390-foot single for Darryl Strawberry. Lenny Dykstra, the runner at second, can't pick it up. Finally does, and he makes his way to third, but the Mets don't score. Hard to believe, huh, Straw? 
Bottom of the third now. See you later time for Howard Johnson. Hitting out of the number two hole. Hojo's on fire. That two-run dinger, his sixth of the year, and it proves to be the game winner. Top of the seventh now. Cone comes up with a double play ball. Ken Caminiti bouncing out four to six to three. The Mets get out of a bases-loaded jam. And in the top of the ninth, the Astros gamble and lose. Gary Carter gunning down Terry Poole at second to end it. The final, Mets two to one over the Astros. On the National League scoreboard, St. Louis shut out by San Francisco, nine zip. Cincinnati seven, Philly four, Montreal beaten up on Atlanta, and a couple more games just underway out west. Now to venerable Chicago Stadium, where the Blackhawks and Flames are playing to untie their NHL semifinal, each with a win apiece coming in. Rangers may be long gone from the playoffs, but New York well represented. Watch Chicago goalie Elaine Chevre, himself a former New Jersey Devil, unable to clear. And there's Joey Mullen from Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan, firing it into the back of the net at 4-11 of the first period. It made it 2-0. That made it 1-0. It was 2-0 at the end of one, and it's 2-0 now in the second. Now, down in the Valley of the Suns, round two of the NBA playoffs got underway today. It's Phoenix against Golden State at Veterans Memorial Coliseum. The best of a bunch of great shots comes from none other than the Gorilla. Blasting off for the jam. This is more fun than the Barrel of Monkeys, isn't it, Van? Take a look at this landing, too. Ooh, beauteous. Next, going down the paint, point man Kevin Johnson driving for two of his 15, one of six sons in double figures, plus 11 assists for Johnson. Great day for rookie Dan Marley, too. How about the double clutch off the offensive rebound over seven foot seven minute ball? Marley with 22, Tom Chambers with 25. The Suns take game one of the best of seven series, 130 to 103 over Golden State. Tomorrow, the Bulls and Cavaliers get together to decide who gets to play the Knicks in the second round. Head coach Rick Pitino thinks his club continued their education, sweeping Philly. Plus, he offers his reasons for pulling for Michael Jordan and the Bulls to advance tomorrow. We got an awful lot out of, out of those three games. It made a young team gain valuable experience. We want to play the Chicago Bulls without question because it gets us the home court advantage. And any advantage, any edge that you can have uh, is in your favor. And maybe Lisa will give you guys a favor and give you a good weekend. Let's find out. <laughs> huh? What's it going to be? Well, one of the two days was a nice weekend today. I think we're kind of <laughs> going to kiss tomorrow goodbye as far as the sunshine. The forecast when we return. Stay with us. Imagine stepping into life 200 years ago in colonial Williamsburg, a living, breathing, working town, a town waiting to be discovered, experienced, explored. Another way of life is waiting for you. See it. Live it. For information, call 1-800-HISTORY and come to Colonial Williamsburg. The Audi three-year test drive. Three years of German style without the responsibilities of ownership. Three years of German luxury with none of the scheduled maintenance costs. Three eminently affordable years with the car you've always desired. Don't let a lease this impressive pass you by. For more information, call 1-800-727-4800. Where, where, where did you get that hair? Excuse me if I stare. Nexus products, only in salons where you go for beautiful hair. For 50 years, I was a reporter for a large metropolitan New York newspaper. I flew all over town looking for stories. Now, hey, we got enough readers who don't complain. Why knock ourselves out? Let the New York Post fight for exclusives on sports, local news, page six, six days a week and Sunday too. Me, I haven't got the strength. The New York Post. If you really want the news, it's in the Post. The cleanup has begun from Texas to the Carolinas. For two days, nature showed its awesome power. Tornadoes have killed 21 people. Hundreds were injured, left homeless. North Carolina particularly hard hit. 
One tornado there cut a 25-mile path of destruction. Lisa, we can expect some more rain tonight, heavy at times. I we guess. will. Very similar system just kind of making its way through our tri-state region at this moment. Finally, though, the National Weather Service has canceled most of the severe weather warnings that had been in effect all day. And now we're just under cloudy skies, but rain is on the way. As I speak, temperature right now 58 degrees, humidity 84 percent. Winds coming from the relatively mild weather direction of southeast 10 miles per hour. And the barometer on the rise, 29.70 inches of mercury. Here's what's happening. A cold front pressing through the tri-state region, and it has little storm systems on it. Right now is an area of low pressure where you can see the white clouds developing. Now, all of the warnings have been canceled. That doesn't mean that we're in the clear especially as far as our rivers are concerned. Last night's rain had pretty much put all the rivers in eastern New York and northern New Jersey at their flood stage, so here are the summations. Flood warnings of Passaic and Raritan flood stages have crested and could go above flood stage, but we'll consider these watches, Ramapo, Wanakue, and Rockaway. So watch out if you live in the low-lying river basins, you know who you are. Just pay particular attention, especially through the night, because radar is showing us Moderate to heavy shower activity still continue to press its way through our tri-state region. It will be bringing us anywhere from light to moderate thunder showers through the rest of tonight, maybe even some hail, because it's very cold activity upstairs, meaning in the upper atmosphere, mixing with the warmth of today. Speaking of today, it was pretty nice. New Haven, 69 degrees. Newark, 75. So it was a good Saturday. For Sunday, the feature map shows that this system is out of our picture. However, counterclockwise flow around this storm system that will be in New England tomorrow will still leave instability in the air. And that could mean some scattered thunder showers. But tonight is what we have to get over. Cloudy, stormy, windy, hail, and some clearing. More on the five-day forecast coming up. Stay with us. If I had the power to change something in the world, I would change the people who make fun of the children who have AIDS. These children are in hospitals and at their homes all over the world. I'm sure if you had AIDS, you wouldn't like to be made fun of. I know I wouldn't. It is so mean. You can't catch AIDS if you stand next to someone who does have AIDS. Everyone should understand that. I know I do. I don't think it's fair. They are humans too. A funny thing is happening at A&P. People are getting more and are spending less. It's a place where people know the score, where you pay much less and you get much more. Aisle after aisle, front to rip, but there's a way to save. You'll find it here, say it sure is great. You know it's kind of funny how you get much more when you spend less money. Come share the proud new feeling. Do you get a chill when you think what it costs to cool your home? At the Con Edison Conservation Center, we'll show you how to bring those costs down. Is your refrigerator door leaking cold cash? We can help you save cash. We've got lots of ways to save. Even a computer to help you choose energy efficient appliances. The Con Edison Conservation Center, 42nd and Lexington. A visit won't cost you, but staying away might. Chrysler Plymouth interrupts this commercial for an important announcement. Zero percent financing on every new 1989 car in stock. That's right, zero percent. Here's to you, America. Here's to the red, white, and blue. You were there for Chrysler Plymouth. Now Chrysler Plymouth's here for you. Here's to you, America, with your Chrysler Plymouth dealer's biggest savings program ever. Record cold gripped the Midwest today, and that's the origin of where our weather in the next couple of days is going to be coming from. So it'll be rather chilly, but for tomorrow, we'll call it milder. 60 to 65 AccuWeather is calling. The sun may come out, but more in the form of the hazy sunshine. Scattered thunder showers throughout the day, especially overnight tomorrow night. Five-day forecast continues to show us a slow dip in the temperatures, but still relatively nice for Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we come back up with a little bit warmer temperatures, but we're back to a rain event toward the end of our five-day forecast. So go out and enjoy tomorrow in between some of the sun, but there still will be rain. In between the raindrops. Yes. Well, I like to be more optimistic, not <laughs> pessimistic. <laughs> okay. As we leave you tonight, we have late word of an accident on a ride at Playland in Far Rockaway. Details are still sketchy, but EMS officials have just told us 25 people are
are stuck in a ride that's turned upside down six stories in the air. Rescue workers are headed for the scene, and so far, there are no reports of any injuries. We will have more details tomorrow night. And that's our news for now. I'm Van Hackett. And I'm Reg Wells. Tomorrow night, I'll have a real superstar with me, Sarah Lee Kessler. Get your heart out, pal. <laughs> I'm Reg Wells. Good night. <laughs>